Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles, if we will. Hallelujah. We're talking about authority. Do we remember last week we kind of diverted, uh, began to minister. We ministered to Gwen about, you know, some things, and Daniel about some things, and ministered to people by the Holy Ghost, and about direction, some direction coming, and... Um, we, we want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I would tell you, Wednesday night was, a, was good because we got to talk about being, you know, how, how the role of the Holy Spirit in your faith and uh, how we need to be hearing from God even when we're walking by faith. Amen? That the Spirit of God will give you direction um, that goes along with your faith. Amen? Or it'll tell you how to, how, how to get to what your faith is after. Amen? Hallelujah. So uh, we, we, cover, we cover that on Wednesday night. We, we, we kind of got up here to the point of, you know, Jesus turning the authority over to the church a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I believe that was, a, yeah, that was a Sunday that we were, we were, the election was going on and we had early voting and we got the door shut on us by some uh, uptight polar polling official. They said we were, we were making political speech. And, uh, oh Lord, help him. Hallelujah. We weren't making political speech. We weren't endorsing a candidate. We weren't confirming a candidate. We weren't telling you who we were voting for as a candidate. We were covering an issue that is an issue that, of life, not a political issue. It may, may become political, but it's not a political issue. It's, you know, it's life. And um, it was religious speech. They don't want us to have religious speech. Trust me, those people. But we, that's where we were. We're talking about Jesus turning authority over to the church. And then we, we were going to get into, we were working towards getting into, um, remember we talked about in the beginning that in the Garden of Eden, God gave man all authority. Man lost that authority. He turned it over to the devil. How many know that? We, we talked about how that, you know, in whom the God of this world, Satan he became the God of this world. All right? Because, uh, he, because he tricked or, or subdued Adam and Eve in the garden, they fell for the lust of the lies, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. They turned it over to the devil. He became the God of this world. Man was born again from life unto death. He became subordinate to Satan. Satan became his God or his spiritual father. Jesus says in John 8, 44, to, to the uh, Jews, he said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will fulfill. Talking about the devil. Of course, they got mad and said, We have Abraham to our father. He said, If you had Abraham as your father, you, you, you would do the, the will of the father. Not the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Hallelujah. So, Jesus came to get our authority back. When Adam committed high treason in the garden, man was sold into spiritual captivity and bondage to Satan forever. In other words, as long as Satan had the authority granted to him uh, or transferred to him that was granted to Adam, he had man in captivity. There was no liberation for man. There was no way out for man. Man, well, what well, about the Old Testament law and all the covenants? They didn't go to heaven. They went to Abraham's bosom, which was the upper region of the place of the, of the departed dead. In other words, when you left this earth, you went to Abraham, if you were in, in a righteous state according to the law you went to abraham's bosom if you were not you went into the lower regions of torment now remember when um jesus told the story it's not a parable everybody talks about the parable of the rich man lazarus jesus didn't say it was a parable he said there was a certain rich man who fared sumptuously every day certain didn't say it was a parable he said, he didn't say, I'll liken it unto, or whatever. He, he said, there was a certain rich man who fared sumptuously every day. Uh, and there was a beggar named Lazarus who ate the crumbs that fell from his master's table. And it came to pass in time that Lazarus died, and he was taken in comfort, place of comfort in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died and went, went into hell, went into torment. And lifting up his eyes, see Lazarus, Lazarus afar off, saith and said, Father Abraham, Allow Lazarus to come, dip his finger in water, come across the gulf, and lay it on my finger. And he said, and Abraham said, you're, you're mistaken. 
No one can come from here and go there. No one from over there can come over here. And besides, you know, you in your lifetime dealt fair sumptuously and dealt well and so forth. And, um, you know, and then and finally the rich man says, well, send Abraham, Lazarus back to my brethren so they won't come here. And uh, Abraham said, you know, if they, they have the law and the prophets, if they won't believe them, they won't believe they won't be raised from the dead. Okay? So we know that the departed did not go into heaven. Why? Because the way was not made yet. The path in back into heaven was not there for man. He was still alienated. He was still an alien spirit from God because he was under Satan's domain and authority. And it wasn't until Jesus... Go to Colossians, uh, please. It wasn't until Jesus came and broke that authority that a man was able to leave that place. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. You being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened or made alive, to get alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, that was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. No, it's not. Is it? No. Is it not? I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. Hallelujah. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, contrary to us, took it out of the way, and nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Now, let's, let's, I'm going to move this little, this huge podium. Hallelujah. Do you want to get multiple pastors? Can I? Can I? <laughs> Hallelujah. Notice the Bible says Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly. When did this happen? Now, this isn't Easter. This is a good Easter sermon, but we'll just do it now because it's in the middle of the authority of the believer. Hallelujah. Well, remember uh, that back over in Acts, when Peter gets up on the day of Pentecost, and begins to preach his sermon. Remember that sermon? Hallelujah. Leave over in Acts chapter 2. A little bit down in chapter 2. And. Um, verse 25. For David speaking concerning the, him. I foresaw the Lord always. On my, before my face he is on my right hand. That I should not be moved. Therefore did my tongue rejoice. My heart rejoice. My tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Now remember, our flesh will rest in hope until the, Jesus returns and the corruption shall put on incorruption and mortals shall put on immortality. Until then, our flesh will rest in hope. Amen. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither without uh, suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now what does it mean? His body wasn't going to decay. Okay? But Jesus, Jesus went to hell for you. And when he was raised from the dead and led captivity captive. Remember that? The Bible says he led captivity captive. Who are the captives? The captives were the ones in Abraham's bosom who couldn't go to heaven, who could not go into the presence of God yet. They were in a holding station. They were still, as it were, under the dominion of Satan in the fact that they could not go to the, they could not have their spirit released to be joined to God. They had a promissory note it was coming. There was a promise that it was on the way. Hallelujah. But they could not go and access the throne of God because they were still a subordinate spirit to Satan even though that they were in a, quote, Old Testament righteous state. So they were held. They were held in Abraham's bosom by faith for the coming event. And there was a coming event. Glory to God. I said there was a coming event. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll not leave his soul in hell. You'll not suffer him to suffer. You'll not allow him to suffer corruption. Hallelujah. So Jesus came, but not, not um, just so we could be born again in the sense that we could, we could be alive unto God. He came to get our authority back. And in doing so, he could transfer the life of God into the spirits of men. 
In other words, he could release them from Satan's dominion over their human spirits and make them so that they could be joined once again into God. The Bible says he broke down the middle wall of partition between us and the Jews. Amen? Then, you know, the Bible says it was enmity between us and God. But Jesus came to destroy that enmity because he had to break Satan's hold and Satan's dominion over man. That's why the Bible says there in Colossians, he spoiled. That word is used in Greek literature and Greek uh, history in reference to the Romans. Um, the, you know, they, they used it because Greek, Greek was the language of the day. They used it in reference to how the, the Roman soldiers would defeat a people and they would spoil the strong men. They would, they would parade them as defeated foes. They'd put them in cages and bring them and parade them through the streets. And many times they would take them out and drag them by the hair to head and, and mock and, and, and so, so that all the people knew that the strongest of their people were defeated. And Jesus went. And after three days, the Father said, It's enough. I'll be to him a father, and he'll be to me a son. Let all the angels of God worship him. And he ceased to be called the only begotten of the Father. He is called, okay, the firstborn of many brethren, but he's also called the first begotten or firstborn from the dead. And it can't refer to physical death because we got folks who raised from the dead all through the Old Testament and under the ministry of Jesus and under the ministry of the disciples during the time that Jesus was on the earth before he went to the cross. You cannot be talking about being the firstborn from the dead, physical. How many does it take to, be, to outdo that? Lazarus. One event makes him the second, at least the second raised from physical death. And we know there's more than that. We know that, you know, the, uh, when Elijah, Elisha had finished his, it was dead, had only committed, uh, uh, had 13 recognized miracles in the Bible, but he had asked for a double portion, and Elijah had seven. That when they went by one day by a sepulcher, they were in battle, and when the young man got killed in battle, they took him and just threw him in the sepulcher. They didn't have time to bury him. He rolled in there, fell up against Elisha's bones, and it raised him up from the dead. He came running down the gut thing going, Hold on, boys, and don't you know that when they saw that haint, they took off. Some of y'all know what a haint is, don't you? Anybody know what a haint is? All right. It's, it's, it's a ghost. Okay, in African-American culture, especially in, like in Eastern Carolina, you talk about haints, they're talking about ghosts. All right? You can, you can imagine how fast they were running. We just threw him in the... He's dead. Wait, wait, guys. <laughs> I'm alive and well. Hallelujah. And so um, we know we, we, we had the prophet raise the little, the, the, the little boy from the dead. Remember the woman, widow woman's boy that had been given to her supernaturally? He died. The prophet went and raised him from the dead. We had people raised from the dead throughout the Old Testament. We had people raised from the dead throughout the ministry of Jesus. He told the disciples to go out and, you know, to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, all this stuff in their ministry of the 70, the, the commissioning of the 70. He raised the young man on the briar. He raised uh, uh, Jairus' daughter up from the dead. Hallelujah. Lazarus was raised from the dead. Glory to God. Are you here? Numerous, num this is all before Jesus went to the cross. So to say that him being the first begotten of the dead, meaning he's the first one that got raised from physical death, is just not accurate. Can't be. The Bible can't support that. Now, he went and took our place. He became spiritually separated from the Father so we could be joined to the Father. <clears throat> so Jesus came, came while we were in a state. What? Ephesians says, while we were all together dead in our trespasses and sins. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. And he quickened us together and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus came to get the authority back. Remember over in Psalm 8, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou hast, crowned, thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. You know, God, majesty and plurality more. King James translates as angels, but Elohim in the Hebrew. Okay? Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. Man was created and crowned with glory and honor. He turned it over to Satan. Jesus came to get the crown back. He came to whoop the devil, defeat the devil, and get the crown of authority back. For what purpose? So that man was no longer bound to be under the dominion of Satan. Do you understand before Jesus came, human spirits were not able to be freed? They couldn't be free. And then God 
comes along, and, and they, they think, man, we got this thing together. We're cool. We're, we're all right. We're doing it. You know, and he gives them the law to let them know, hey, this is what you've got to do. And never miss it on one account to get to the point you can be free from Satan's authority. And what did it say in the New Testament? The law was given as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It, what did it, do? it proved we were utterly sinful. We couldn't be free. Why? Because we were of our father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will fulfill. We were, we were spiritually, genetically bound to be sinners. Because Satan was our spiritual father. Although the void and the desire to be with God was there, we couldn't get there. There's no, there was no wet path there. God had to send a reconciler. God had to send a deliverer. God had to send one who could not only, you know, I mean, Jesus could have come and preached good things to us and taught us good things, and everybody could have gone to Abraham's bosom, but that still would not have fulfilled what God's purpose was, and that was to be reconciled to us. So that we would have life in us, and while we could stand in his presence, free from the conscientiousness. Not just covered for a year that we could, we could get to the temple and hang out for the next year. Free from the consciousness. Remember this? For if the blood of bulls and of goats, Hebrews chapter 9, for if the blood of bulls and of goats, around verse 14, for the blood, I'll say it again, for the blood of goats, bulls and goats and the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more? I said, how much more? How much more shall the blood of Christ what? Purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. See, we could have lived in Abraham's bosom in, in a state of Old Testament or law righteousness, not suffering in hell, but it would still be what? We would still be captives under Satan's domain in the sense we were no longer, we were still not free to enter into the presence of God. We couldn't go to God. Jesus came to get that back. Hallelujah. And so when he came, and you know, and he, and he suffered for three days and nights, and Satan had dominion over him, and they were tormenting him. They, he, uh, Psalm 22, they gaped upon him with their mouths, you know, as a ravening and roaring lion. They looked on him whom they pierced. Just goes, that, Psalm 22 is the cross. I was bound by the bulls of Bashan, the strong bulls of Bashan. You know, I mean, he's bound. This is, this is the depiction of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. And then Jesus says at the very end of that, at the psalm, they say, and he has said this, he hath done this. Now, the King James translates that in, in the Greek when he said, it is finished. Redemption wasn't finished at the cross. What was it? What was, what was finished? The law. And the veil of the temple rent in twain from top to bottom, thus signifying the way into God was no longer through the temples made by the hands of men. And there was more work to be done, but the law ended. The priest, when they sent Jesus to be crucified through, through Herod. Are you here? Or Pontius Pilate. To Pilate. When they sent, when they, when they turned him over and and sent him there. They, com they offered their last sacrificial lamb under the law. He was the last of the lamb. John the Baptist said, Behold the lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. There's a term that the King James uses that's, re that's really inaccurate. You'll see it. It's atonement. It's not even in the Greek. They use, they use the word atonement to cover. It's paschal. It's, it, wasn't, it, was not, it was not atoned. Jesus did not atone our sin. Atone means to cover. The Bible says he purged. There's a difference between covering and purging. If you mask something, it's covered. If you eliminate it, it's purged. We were selling a house one time when I was a kid. We, we were going to move, and uh, I was supposed to clean the kitchen up. Somebody showed up to see the house, and I hadn't done it yet. And I went and took everything and crammed it in the oven. <laughs> Glass door oven. Didn't even put a towel over the handle of the oven to hide it. And so the folks coming, they just, looked, they just laughed. They knew what I had done. They, they thought, you know, those kids, his, his parents told him to clean the kitchen. He didn't get it done. Put it in the oven. All the dirty dishes sitting in there. I mean, glasses, everything. 
It, was, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't even covered good. But see, covering is not the same thing as purging. Are you here? You, you know, when, when we, uh, I've had people call me, you know, get, get mad and leave the church and, you know, they said, remove me from your mailing list. I purged them. What do you mean? Delete. You said, get me off of there. Then they call back and say, why don't you have our, our address and number? You told me to get you all, get rid of you. So I purged you. I didn't, I didn't cover you up. I didn't take you and put you on the non-active list. I purged you. You said, get, rid, get me off. I went off. So you got purged. And then they call you back and want to know why they're not getting any information. What are you drinking today? You been smoking some of that, that wacky weed or something? I mean, you know. Anyway, he's purged our conscience. We're not covered. So we did, Jesus did not come to put us on a hold for another day. So that's what the Old Testament law did. It purged, I mean, it covered the sins of the nation for another year. And it covered it for another year. And it covered it for another year. And it covered it for another year. And it kept pushing it off because there's a day coming. I said there was a day coming. What day was that? Genesis 3.15. And the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. Now, how many have figured out in life, the virgin birth, women don't have seed. Come on. God prophesied the virgin birth in Genesis 3.15. And he's come. Now, the word bruise your head was an, was an ancient oriental term that referred to breaking the authority of. So God said, that the seed of the woman will come and break your authority. What authority? The one he just got from, from Adam. Satan couldn't even enjoy. He just got it. Just, I mean, just wrapped his hands around it, and he had, whoo, I got it, I got it. Woo! I mean, they were having him a party. And God shows up and said, the seed of the woman's going to come, and he's going to take your authority back away from you. Doggone it. So what does Satan keep doing? He keeps killing the Israelites because he knows there's the promised lake. That's the promised race. He keeps trying to wipe them out. He keeps trying to destroy them. When Jesus was born and the star was there and the, and the guy showed up and started talking, he, he, he moved on the heart of Herod, I believe it was Herod, uh, to go out and he killed all the babies two years and under. We all have, I've got a manger scene, a, a, a nativity. Not nativity anymore, you got to say nativity. I call it a nativity. I'm from Eastern Carolina, it's a nut. And it's not a nativity. I got relative because dimatap, dimatap. It's dimatap. 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 Anyway, how do you know that the, 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 the wise men weren't there at the manger? And, and, you know, because the Bible says that he killed all the children, he sent out to have all the children killed, ages two and under, according to the, that which he had diligently inquired of the Magi, or the wise men. They had been following that star for two years. The baby was about two years old at the time. Hello? And the Bible says they even found a young child in the house. They went, didn't go to the stables. They found a young child in the house. I know, you know, come let us worship the king. Jesus, we've got all the wise men there and the magi and all that. You know, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I get it. We got, but, you know, the truth is they weren't there. They showed up later. But what, what, what does Satan do? He tried to kill all the babies. Because he knew that one of them was the seed that was coming to strip his authority away from him. And Jesus came to get the authority. How is he going to get it? And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but let's just kind of throw it in there. Remember when Satan took him to a high place and showed him all the, all the kingdoms of the earth and said, you know, uh, all these kingdoms are mine and, and I'll give them to you and the glory of them uh, if you will but bow down and worship me for they have been given unto me. When were they given unto him? Heaven in the garden of Eden. 
Ah, oh, so you can't tell the truth. He didn't. Have, yes, 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 yes. It was the truth. That was true. The lie was he's gonna give it to Jesus. That was the lie. And the lie wasn't that he had them. No, people, that's why Jesus was here, was to get it. Because Satan had it. The lie was that Satan said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give it to you. No, he wouldn't. Neither would Darth Vader have given it to Luke. He had no intention of giving Luke any power. Why? Because you don't know the power of the dark side. Vader had no intention of giving Luke and sharing rule with him. The emperor has foreseen this. Yeah, the emperor wants to cut you off before you get strong to take over. Anyway, Vader's a liar. And I know somebody's got t-shirts that say Vader was framed. But anyway, Ben, do you have one of them? T-shirts that says Vader was framed. You don't have one? Okay, I've seen them. That, he was an idiot. <laughs> All right, so Jesus comes, and he's walking on the earth, and Satan tries to kill him every chance he gets, tries to drown him, tries to get people to stone him. I mean, they try to throw him off a cliff. They try to do all kinds of stuff, and they can't do it. Remember, they took him to a cliff. They're going to throw him off. He turned around and walked right through the middle of them. Yeah. All kinds of, they're trying to kill him. They can't kill him. He goes out on the boat. He's asleep. He tries to bring up a storm to drown him. Jesus is back there asleep. I mean, it's, you know, it must, wasn't really bad. Professional fishermen came back and said, well, don't, don't you care, we're about to drown. It's a bad storm. Jesus stands up and goes, peace be still, storm stops. And they all look at him like little uh, whipped puppy dogs that just got into your trash can. How is it you had no faith? Satan tries to kill him in the storm. I mean, everywhere you turn around, they're trying to kill him. How is Jesus going to get the authority? Because he's walking on the earth, he's casting out devils, he's raising the dead, he's healing the sick, but he is not taking people and taking them to heaven. Why? How is this? Because a man in the flesh was initially granted the authority, a man in the flesh had to get it back. And it had to be transferred to him in a legal, spiritual sense. He couldn't just go take it away. He didn't have the right to. Because Adam had been granted that authority, and Adam, of his own free will, not under duress, unless you call losing the woman duress, maybe that was, transferred it to Satan. There must be something to either breach the contract of Satan's authority, or Satan willingly giving it up. And he won't willingly give it up nothing. Evil never willingly gives up power. You have to defeat power. So how did that happen? Jesus, now remember when they came to take Jesus. Well, they just came, they got, he, he was outnumbered and they took him and captured him. Really? They came and Jesus said, he said, who are you seeking? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm him. And they all fell down. They all got knocked down by the Holy Ghost. I am he. Boom! He could have walked off. Peter runs out, finds one gets, getting back up, and cut, takes the sword and cuts the guy's ear off. Whack! Peter, come here. Go get the ear. Bring it to me. Shake the dirt off. Slap. Guy's got blood coming off his head, you know. And Jesus heals his ear. Puts it back on. That had, to be a, that had to kind of mess him up a little bit. And one minute's over on the ground, next minute's back up here, and, and it's, it's stuck. And you don't have crazy glue blood. Judas comes up, kisses him on the cheek, and Jesus goes. And the Bible says this in here in his trial, as a lamb before his shearers, he opened not his mouth. See, God knew the plan and satan is so power hungry to get jesus he has tried from his birth until this day to find a way to kill him because he wants to stop the plan of god and when he could when he became an adult and he couldn't kill him he tried to deceive him into giving uh, subordinating himself to, to satan 
if you would bow down and worship him, that would have destroyed any plan, chance God had to redeem mankind. But Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. Foiled again! Satan is so power crazed because back in Ezekiel, he had said, I will ascend my throne into the heavens and I'll be as the most high. He, wanted, he was the anointed cherub that covered. He wanted that throne. That was his goal. That was his goal. And God used his hunger for power against him. Because when Jesus went to the cross, the Bible says who, that, he, that in every point he was tempted like us, yet without sin. Jesus never sinned. Jesus never transgressed the law of God, the Father. Jesus never failed to honor and to please the Father. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, He who was made sin... Not he who committed sin, he who was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness. Now, the King James puts the words to be in there. Their italics are not in the Greek. It really leads, and he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Sin overtook him. Not because he sinned, but he allowed it. He allowed himself to be separated from the Father. And, are you ready for this? Come under Satan's dominion and authority. Here's the thing. Satan had no right to it because he hadn't sinned. Satan took him captive and began to torment him. Remember Psalm 22nd Psalm? They gaped upon him with their mouths as a rabbit and roaring lion. Y'all look at that and read it. Jesus allow he's the trojan horse of all trojan horses he goes into hell the demons and the forces of darkness you know are, are arrayed against him uh, and and they're coming against him and they're gaping upon him with their mouths and after about three days the father looks down and says it's enough thou art my son this day have i begotten thee there's a big uh-oh in hell because all of a sudden, are you here? He spoiled. He hurled back. One translation says he hurled back principalities and powers. I mean, there were demons bouncing off the walls. Bing, 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 like pinball machine. I mean, the pinball wizard had showed up. I mean, bing, 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 bing. And Jesus stood up. And the Father said, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. What does he do? Satan has a throne. And sitting on his throne, he has the crown of glory that God had given to man, that man had given to Satan. And he goes and strips him of his authority. He gets the authority to rule over human spirits back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Human spirits are still lost if they don't associate with Jesus. But the inability to leave Satan's dominion has been crushed. Satan takes that crown, amen, makes a show of the, the, the principalities and powers openly, and then for the first time ever, Abraham's bosom witnesses something. Somebody walking across the gulf. Oh, my. David starts a dancing. That's the Lord that said unto my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Jacob says, that's the one I wrestle with at the ladder. Hallelujah. Are you, are you here? Then, you know, uh, Abraham, that's the smoking furnace. Glory to God. I mean, you got all these guys. You know, that's the will within the will of Ezekiel. Praise God. They're all beginning to shout. They're beginning to, woo! I mean, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, get him. Hey, I seen him before. That's the fourth man that was in the fire furnace. Glory to God. I mean, they're having them a fit up there. And then he walks across that gulf with the crown of authority. Satan laying back there in, 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 in the corridors of hell. I mean, whimpering like a beat pup. 
All the other demons around there going, what happened, boss, 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 what happened? What just, what just happened? And Jesus comes to the other side and does this. The Bible says this. He went and preached to the captives. All those in Abraham's bosom, he came and stood before them and said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I am he who was and is and is to come. I am the, I am the Redeemer. Hallelujah. I have the crown of man's authority. And that's when the Bible says he led captivity captive. And on the way up, he stopped by and picked up his body, and so did a few of the old saints. Because Matthew says down there, like Matthew, the, the, I forgot, something 54, that went down the end of the book, 27, whatever. It says that many of the old saints came out of their graves and walked among the streets, and many were seen of many. Uncle Henry showed up and said, hey, guys, I just saw Messiah. Just stop by here and say hello, and we're on the way up. Been dead five years. Here comes Uncle Charlie. All sitting down at dinner, telling stories about Uncle Charlie. Here he comes walking in the room. I want you guys to know that the, 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 uh, the Lord just showed up, delivered us out of Abraham's bosom. We're on the way to heaven. Believe. Bye. And take off. You read it. It says right there in Matthew. It says that he let, many came out, picked, came out of the graves. We went into town. We're seeing a many. And Jesus picks up his body, and on the way by, here comes Mary to the tomb. She gets a hold of him and says, don't, don't clutch me. The Bible King James says, don't touch me. No, no, no. Of course, he was holy. She couldn't touch No, that's not what it says. In the Greek, it says, really, don't clutch me. For I have not yet ascended to my God and your God and to my Father and your Father. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Oh, the compassion of the Lord. The one who denied him three times. Go tell all the guys and Peter. What you saw. And if he goes up, they're all behind him. He's leading this processional in. He gets up to heaven. He walks into the Holy of Holies to the mercy seat and begins to put his blood. He entered in not once and for all, not with the blood of bulls or goats or the ashes of heifer, but with his own blood. He entered in once and for all to obtain an eternal redemption. What is in that eternal redemption? He had the authority. Man is no longer born and, and, and subjugated to Satan without a recourse. Amen. I hear all this time, I, I get so fed up with listening to people. The, the media and people who are uneducated in truth. They, got, they get college degrees, but they're uneducated in truth. We do not have the right to protest. You have the right to peaceful assembly and redress of grievances. That's a difference than protesting, burning cars and burning buildings down and, and blocking traffic. You have the right to peaceful assembly and the redress of grievances. In other words, to have them, to, 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 to have them voiced and, and answers given. But you don't have the right to burn cars and tear buildings down and loot and all this kind of stuff. That's protesting. The Constitution gives us the right to peaceful assembly and the redress of grievances. We need to become more educated about our nation, people. Amen. Burning stuff down is not, a, is not a right. We don't have the right to do that. Anyway, where was I? Oh, he led cat. So they're, they're all up there. He's going into the heavenly hall. Those, what, those captives are waiting. What are they waiting for? They still have not gotten to the throne of God yet and into the presence of the Father yet because the, the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek has got his blood and he's got to go get it on the mercy seat and for the Father to accept that so that, so that what? He acknowledges the retransference of man's authority back to the man, Christ Jesus. He's the Son of God, but the Bible also refers to him as the man, Christ Jesus. And it was in his humanity that he re acquired man's authority. This is all important. And when he goes in and he puts his blood on the mercy seat and the Father accepts that blood, Satan's dominion, now remember this, under the Old Testament, everywhere man's authority went had to be cleansed with blood because it was tainted and it was a symbol of heaven. Jesus went through heaven and cleansed Satan's tainting of the authority that God gave to man. And then he came back, and then when he rose, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He had now given man, anybody that was born again, 
that authority to reign and rule, have dominion over defeated spirits, Satan and all of his cohorts. The Bible says over in the book of Ephesians, and he put all things under his feet. He put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Jesus acquired, I know it's getting late. Oh, my Lord, Jesus, hallelujah. We've got 20 minutes. I'm having fun. Y'all having fun yet? Y'all getting ministered to yet? All right, when we get done, got to clean up real quick, all right? We'll be out of here, Gary. I promise. When Jesus got it and went to the Father and the Father said accepted, he turned right around and gave it to man. He oversees it. He's the head, but he gave it to his body. We now walk in that authority that we once could not have because we were under Satan's authority. Hallelujah. We'll have to pick up here next week. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or Using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.